Welcome to Mr. Oza's virtual classroom. This is the very first episode of my virtual classroom, so I want to thank you so much for joining me. Uh, this video is titled Introduction to Siddhartha, and today we'll be talking about Hermann Hesse's 1951 novel titled Siddhartha. So here are our goals for this video. First of all, we just want to introduce you to the plot of this novel and the main characters of this novel. Our agenda will be to look at the pre-reading number one document, which uh, my students can find at hlc.joza.org. We are going to discuss some of the main characters that we will find in the novel. And at the end of this video, we're going to take a look at the 1973 film version of the novel. Some photos to get us started. In the top left corner, you will see uh, one of the book covers for Hermann Hesse's novel, Siddhartha. Again, in the top right corner, you'll see another one. You can see the picture on the cover of the novel is the Buddha, a character from the religion Buddhism that you, I'm sure, are familiar with. So we'll be talking about the Buddha, who actually becomes one of the characters in this novel. Um, aside from being a leader of the religion Buddhism, uh, in this novel, you will see the Buddha as um, a character in this piece of literary work. And the other two images that you'll see here, one in the middle, one in the bottom left, these are images from the 1973 uh, Conrad Brooks film titled Siddhartha, of course. Here is our main character, Siddhartha, without a beard. Here he is with a beard. Here is his, here is his good friend Govinda one of the main characters of the novel, and here's the main love interest of Siddhartha, and that is Kamala. All right, just a few thoughts of um, my first um, initial thoughts regarding the novel, as I'll move myself over here to the side. Uh, I feel like this book will give you the secret of how to live a successful, a fulfilling, and a happy life. Um, it's a really good book for teenagers because Siddhartha is a character who wants to um, start a new life for himself at the age of 17 or 18 years old and um, Siddhartha grows up in a society where there is no organized high school or college and it, he takes it upon himself to uh, move on from the village that he's spent his whole life in and search for a higher education or a feeling of enlightenment, a word that we'll be talking a lot about throughout this unit. Um, it's a really short book, it has a powerful message though. Um, Herman Hesse's writing style is uh, it's interesting to say the least, you have the original novel being written in German and translated into English. So um, that powerful message, I feel like, might be lost a little bit in the translation, um, having known a little bit of German, myself studying it for a while, reading the actual German version was another fun thing to do. Um, and then finally, I'll get myself out of the way here, it's a simple novel really. It's a very simple formulaic novel. It's easy to follow. It's extremely linear. Uh, it has many life lessons that I feel like will guide you from graduation through college and to your career and beyond. So I feel like it's an extremely valuable um, story. Um, so I can move on now to my uh, pre-reading document here and you will find this at hlc.joza.org. Once again this is the address up here and all of my students know how to uh, log in and access this document and so we'll go over it together right now and then later on you will be able to um, answer the short answer questions that follow. So I write Siddhartha is a novel written by Hermann Hesse in 1922. Uh, Siddhartha is the name of the main character. Uh, he lives in ancient India with his family. He is a Hindu and that means that he follows the religion called Hinduism. Hinduism is a very popular, it is actually the most popular religion in India. In modern times about 70% of the population of India follows the religion of Hinduism. And of course India, a country of over 1.2 billion people, 70% um, of those people following this religion, Hinduism, there's quite a lot of Hindus in the world. Um, my family, um, you know, introduced me to Hinduism. I am. Um, uh, first generation born in this country after my parents immigrated from India and so uh, I learned a lot about Hinduism as a kid so I'm excited to share with you some of the knowledge um, you know that I've built up over the years throughout this unit and so Hinduism is one of the oldest religions and it is one of the few religions that we can say does not really have a 
a particular creator or a, you know one specific leader of the religion um, it's so old that there is no real individual that we can credit this religion's creation with um, and so it's a polytheistic religion meaning there are many 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 gods in Hinduism there's a god for you know every day of the week and so it's um, a lot to study um, if you really want to know you know all of the uh, deities of Hinduism and so Siddhartha is an expert on Hinduism you know when this story begins um, Siddhartha is um, extremely knowledgeable and has earned the respect of all of his peers when it comes to um, Hinduism in chapter one um, as I write here this young man Siddhartha is very good at practicing Hinduism a handsome young man who has earned some respect in the community the young women are attracted to him and the men respect him People seem to think that he'll become a community leader or even a priest of the Hindu religion in the future. It's only one problem. Siddhartha seems to be getting bored with Hinduism. He is in his early 20s and he begins to wonder if Hinduism is true. He, he kind of uh, questions the religion and um, you know has the feeling that uh, there's more to life than just following Hinduism. And um, although he is an expert and has earned the respect of his uh, peers and the religious leaders in the community, that's not enough for him. Siddhartha wants to feel this concept of enlightenment or spiritual enlightenment. And uh, like I said earlier, that is one of the words that we're going to be talking about a lot throughout this unit. So what is enlightenment? There's just so many ways to explain it. In the next video um, about the themes and mo motifs of Siddhartha, we're going to go in depth on the concept of enlightenment. So can look out for that as my dog is whining. Um, but um, we'll have a very quick definition now um, in terms of the relation to enlightenment and uh, how it manifests itself in the story. So what is it? It's a state of mind. It's a feeling that you get inside uh, of your mind, inside your heart. It's a feeling of accomplishment, achievement, and success. Um, when you feel enlightened, you feel at peace, you feel proud. Um, the concept of nirvana in Buddhism is very similar to enlightenment. Um, it's hard to know the answer to life's toughest questions. You know, why do humans exist? What is the meaning of life? How is this universe created? Um, if you feel like you have found some answers to these very tough questions, you might be feeling a sense of enlightenment. If you feel like you've achieved uh, the knowledge of knowing what your purpose on this earth is, you can say that you might have achieved enlightenment. Perhaps when you're not worried about the nuances of everyday life, uh, you have reached the highest level of enlightenment, which as I mentioned, is called nirvana in the Buddhist religion. Have you ever reached it? Sometimes you can have some great, great phenomenal moments in life. You know, sometimes you can walk out of a class feeling accomplished and confident and really happy about your academic performance, you know, and that could be an example of the feeling of enlightenment. Soon, very soon, my students, you guys are going to have a high school diploma. You'll feel very proud after you score, score well on a test, like a standardized test, and you'll be making your family extremely proud. These are all examples of feeling enlightenment, not just academic reasons. You can go to a, a rock concert or, you know, perform uh, something that you're very proud of, and that can also bring you um, a feeling of satisfaction or enlightenment. So, anyways, uh, Siddhartha, he desperately wants to feel this sense of enlightenment because he has so many questions about the world, and Hinduism is not really answering all of those questions. So, he feels like he has to go on some sort of journey to find this sense of enlightenment. So, in the first chapter, he decides to leave his family, leave his community, and leave his whole life behind to start a new quest for en enlightenment. And um, there's one particular group of people that inspire him to leave his family, um, but there are many different groups of people and many lifestyles that he tries on this journey. So his best friend is this man named Govinda, who is also a Hindu, and he is going to follow Siddhartha. He looks up to Siddhartha and has a deep respect for him. And so when Siddhartha leaves on this journey for enlightenment, Govinda wants to go too. And so we have this protagonist and almost a co-protagonist who are leaving on this journey and you are going to go on this journey with them with Siddhartha and Govinda together you're going to be reading about their adventure in ancient India and uh, you'll be seeking enlightenment along with them so I will be asking you important essential questions such as when will you feel enlightenment um, what examples of enlightenment have you had in life already or what are you looking to do in the future um, the context of graduation happening right around the corner I think is a very appropriate topic. So throughout the journey Siddhartha is going to learn about another religion that I also want to mention and this one is called uh, Bud Buddhism 
Um, he even meets a character known as the Buddha or Siddhartha Gautama. So I just want to clear up a little something with regard to this novel. Here's a quick look at uh, Hermann Hesse, uh, the author of this novel. We'll talk about him in a second. But going back to Buddhism, um, you know, th this novel is titled Siddhartha, and there's a little bit of, I don't know, confusion about what this novel is all about. And so in chapter three, our protagonist Siddhartha meets a man known as the Buddha. And the Buddha himself has the same first name as our protagonist. So there's the story of this man Siddhartha Gautama who you know was a prince and he um, lived a very sheltered childhood and um, he ended up being kind of the founder, one of the first Buddha, Buddhas in ancient India. And so that character or that person Siddhartha Gautama is a character in our novel and he pops up in chapter 3. Siddhartha, our protagonist, Siddhartha, our protagonist, is not the Buddha himself, you know, but Siddhartha, you know, this man from this village in ancient India who leaves his family along with his friend Govinda will meet this very famous um, historical character, um, the Buddha. So that will happen in chapter 3. Something very exciting, something to look forward to. Um, so he meets um, some other characters, a young woman in a distant city, a businessman, a ferryman, and um, throughout these adventures, Siddhartha tries to find a sense of enlightenment. Will he find it? Will he ever feel satisfied? A couple of the essential questions of this unit. All right. So we're move on, moving on to talk about some of these specific characters. And so here is uh, Siddhartha. He is... These pictures that you see here are um, screenshots from the 1973 Conrad Brooks film, which we'll talk about in a moment. And so that is my attempt to give you a little visual for what these characters look like. We can credit the uh, casting director of that movie instead of me. So Siddhartha is a young man, a very spiritual man seeking enlightenment. And here is his friend Govinda, the best friend of Siddhartha, similar age, also seeking that um, sense of enlightenment. I can move myself down into the corner here. Um, in chapter two, or at the end of chapter one, Siddhartha is inspired to leave his home and he wants to um, begin this journey in search of spiritual enlightenment. This group of samanas are what uh, inspire him. They are a group of traveling priests or holy men who wander around on foot and are extremely ascetic and we're going to talk about that word more so in the next uh, video but basically this is kind of a almost combination of Hinduism and Buddhism where uh, these people would live in the forest or out in the jungle in ancient India and they would focus on achieving spiritual enlightenment uh, through many uh, you know fasts and um, you know moments of self-deprivation they feel like they could uh, find spiritual enlightenment by depriving themselves of the general pleasures of life such as like eating really delicious food or you know being social and you know finding interesting forms of entertainment instead they would just try to get by on the bare minimum um, a very ascetic um, or self-deprivating way of life it's very different than our way of life it's very different than you know western culture here in the state of massachusetts which is where I'm located and my class is located and so uh, throughout the unit we're going to try to uh, just learn and be open about learning to these different lifestyles that um, you know were around in ancient times and are very that are also prevalent today so um, the samanas kind of inspire Siddhartha to leave his home and try something new um, and then as I mentioned a moment ago we have Gautama in chapter 3 now Gautama is one of the 28 Buddhas so um, there's kind of this thought, or I hear students ask me, isn't the Buddha, Buddha a god? Isn't that a spiritual being, or sorry, a supernatural being? And um, we actually have 28 documented Buddhas throughout the course of history, so actual men who have been spiritual leaders of this religion as opposed to like a supernatural being. Um, uh, so the the original Buddha is Siddhartha Gautama, and so there, I guess there are some confusions with regard to this book because you hear about a book involved with Buddhism, and you hear that the main character's name is Siddhartha, so you almost assume, I guess, that uh, the main character or the protagonist is the Buddha himself because the story of this character right here, Siddhartha Gautama, is a very interesting story. You know, it's a story of a a sheltered prince who then you know sees the plight of average people and then decides to change his lifestyle completely so we do see that character in this novel it's just 
he's not the main character. He pops up in one chapter, and he is a very interesting moment in the story. And you know, we'll get into that in later videos. So just don't be confused. Our main character is just this regular guy named Siddhartha. In fact, I can't say that we even learned his last name. Um, and so I like to use the word Gautama to refer to Siddhartha Gautama, the first Buddha of the 28 Buddhas. So um, you can actually see here, this is um, a chart of the other Buddhas throughout um, the history of Buddhism. All right, later in the story, we're going to meet a woman named Kamala, who is in her mid to late 20s, perhaps a little bit older than Siddhartha. And, um, you know, Siddhartha grows up in his village, um, not showing much interest in romantic um, relationships. And so this is kind of his first go around with regard to romance. And so Kamala is uh, meeting Siddhartha at a very interesting time in his life. Um, Kamala introduces Siddhartha to a gentleman named Kamaswami. Um, in Hindi or Sanskrit, Kama is a word that means uh, work, or going to work, Kama. And Swami is like, you know, a well-respected kind of guru or, you know, teacher. And so this is like the workman, the work teacher. Yeah, he's the person who teaches Siddhartha about business and about money and about how to be entrepreneurial and how to, you know, earn currency and how to, you know, get yourself rich. And so this is another um, important life lesson for Siddhartha as he um, learns from Kamaswami. And then finally, I have one favorite character in each novel that I teach, and my favorite character in this novel is a man named Vasudeva. Um, I want to I wanna leave perhaps some mystery surrounding this character because he, uh, he's not involved until a little bit later. He lives by a river. He provides a ferry service going over this river. Now, in Hindu culture, or, you know, I guess in... Uh, any culture having to do with the Indian subcontinent, rivers, like any uh, civilization, rivers are very, very, very important. They're very symbolic, and we're going to talk about rivers and their significance throughout this unit, maybe every day. But anyways, Vasudeva prov provides a service where he's, you know, bringing people back and forth across the river, and I like to think that this might be the Ganges River, or a very important holy river um, in the Indian subcontinent. Um, throughout the novel, they don't say that this is the Ganges River, in the 1973 Conrad Brooks uh, movie, they do refer to this river that Vasudeva um, goes over as the Ganges River. Um, although the novel doesn't say that, you know, this is, we're talking about the Ganges after all. This is the most um, holy, you know, spiritual river in the Indian subcontinent. So we like to pretend that it is, of course, that river. But, you know, in the context of the novel, it's whatever river you want it to be. Vasudeva is a very smart and he is an enlightened man. And there is something special about this man, something special that we want to learn from. We want to learn from him. We want to um, hear his worldviews. Alrighty, so now... Uh, we're not going to go to next steps yet. We're actually going to talk about this Conrad Brooks film before we move on. And so here we go. This is the 1972 film. This is the IMDb, IMDb page. Conrad Brooks was the uh, director. Uh, it's the story of a young Indian who embarks on a journey to find the meaning of existence, of course, based on the novel by Herman Hesse. The movie was shot in on location in northern India and features work by noted cinematographer. Um, so this is, I think, the original um, promotional image or you know cover of the original film. Um, the actor playing the role of Siddhartha is a gentleman named Shashi Kapoor, um, and he has is part of a Kapoor family. Um, that has quite a name for itself in uh, Bollywood or in Mumbai, India, which is the second largest film industry in the wor world. So Shashi Kapoor, one of many Kapoors to really make a name for themselves, be it in acting or producing or you know any of the many uh, involved talents in the movie industry. And so we're going to take a quick look at the uh, trailer for this um, for this. Film. I'm only, only going to show you, uh, uh, you can watch the rest of it on your own, obviously you know where to find it here on YouTube, but I only want to show you about uh, one minute of it, uh, I don't want to spoil too much, so let's just jump right into it. I've awakened! I've been born today! 
Herman Hesse's Siddhartha was first published a generation ago. Since then, it has become the most widely read best-selling novel of today's generation. These are the Samanas that I mentioned before. Chapter 2. Siddhartha. This is his father. I will stand and wait. Will I die? Do you want to die? I want to die. Would you die rather than obey your father? You can come and tell me the secret of what you want yourself experienced. Those Samanas are a fun, fun-loving crew right there. That is why I am going on my way, not to find a better teacher, but to find a way alone. An epic, An epic journey, journey of the imagination, a panorama, panorama of a of timeless a civilization. civilization. Siddhartha, Siddhartha has been adapted, adapted for the screen, screen by the brilliant young filmmaker Conrad Brooks. Siddhartha. Siddhartha. Yeah. Good try, though. Um, let's get back to our PowerPoint here. So. I hope I have helped generate a little bit of interest in this novel, um, Siddhartha by Hermann Hesse. So next step. So if you are in my English 4 class, your goal now should be to go to hlc.joza.org and complete the assignment pre-reading number one. So if you need to re-watch this video, uh, you can obviously re-watch it anytime. And then you also have the um, pre-reading document that we were reading off of earlier in the video. And you're going to have about 10 or 12 um, short answer questions. And so please let me know if you need any help for that. And wait for the next video. Next video is going to be on themes and motifs in Siddhartha. We are going to uh, have a, another assignment, pre-reading number two. And the themes and motifs in Siddhartha, we're going to get deep into the topic of enlightenment, which will be fun. We will also talk about asceticism, um, which is the lifestyle of kind of depriving yourself of the um, the traditional pleasures in life that the Samanas are following. So I want to thank you very much for watching this very first episode of Mr. Oza's Virtual Classroom. Look out for the next video. It'll be out soon. It's going to be for pre-reading number two, the themes and motifs of Siddhartha. Thanks again.